Hey, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to episode 169. Is it 169 of the Spears Sonny's podcast? Because if so, fucking funny. Let's check it out. 169. Could have done this. Oh, I just got a little spam message on my fucking fitness app. Jeez, that's great, isn't it? It's really fucking awesome when you just have an, have an app and you just get spam on that shit. I have this app called Photocracy to track my workouts. It's great. Good app. But for some reason, you, other cunts can comment and message you. Like it's some kind... Like what Facebook for six packs. No, okay? I don't want to talk to anyone on this fucking app. I just want to do deadlifts and then go back next week and look at, oh, how much did I do last week? Oh, cool, I'll try and do more. That's all I want. It's all I want from my fucking fitness app, right? I don't need a fucking... <laughs> I don't need to set up a group of friends. Let's check out this message. So I, I did a... Oh, this is... They've commented on something that I did 335 weeks ago. Fuck, I've been going to gym for a long time with zero results. <laughs> <laughs> like, that's 335 weeks ago. What was I squatting? Let's see if my lifts have gone up. Squatting 65, benching 47, deadlifting 80. Well, my lifts have gone up. I just haven't changed physically at all. <laughs> Fuck. Hey, you're looking cute. Message me at webpage. Find me by name. Alice 89. See, missed opportunity. Should be Alice 69. And then it's Sweden Love Club. Sweden Love Club. Not, not joining that club. Dude if, dude, if I got a fucking Swedish girl pregnant, my son will be seven foot five. Like, that's... And I don't want to... I don't want to put that on anyone, dude. I don't want to put that on anybody. Making a six... A seven foot five child... Who's also white, like whiter than white. Like, I'm pretty white, but if I also got a Swedish girl pregnant, over. That's like fucking... That'd be whiter than Luke. And that's saying something. Like, that kid, seven foot five, even whiter than me. No, no future in basketball. He'd have to just fucking... You know what? He'd be that cunt that you see floating around on Facebook that everybody likes to tag me and go, Is this you? Of that, what, seven foot seven fucking teenager who plays basketball and he just looks like a... He, he, you know what he looks like? He looks like... Uh, you know when you see... You know when you see video games being made, like in progress, before they have the 3D modeling down and they just have like the skeleton... And it's just, and, and the points move, and it's like, oh yeah, that looks like a human's body, but it looks real rickety, because it's not natural, and it doesn't have all the musculature and the graphics laid over it, it's not smooth. He runs like that, and that's how my son would run. And that's borderline how I run, <laughs> but not entirely. Um, anyway, well, is this episode 169 of the fucking Speared Sunday? It must be if I'm getting messages from sex bots. Fuck, when is Instagram going to fix that shit? Oh, I'm coming. Click my bio to watch. Fuck off, guy from India. Oh, it's only 167. Okay, good. It's not 169. Guys, I will be prepared for 169 because that's going to be a fucking event. Because we haven't had, that would mean we haven't had a, a 69 for 100 episodes, which is about two years. So, well, I'm, I'll, I'll have to plan something. Let me know what I should plan for episode 169, because it's a fucking event. Now, I do realize this again is coming out on a Monday, after I said that it wasn't going to come out on a Monday again. Well, I was all ready. It's not my fault for once that this shit is late, Okay. It's fucking Luke's fault. I was all, I had my whole week planned, right? We're set, we're launching Luke and Lewis on Tuesday. So I'm like, I need to get my podcast out on, on Sunday. So I'll record it on Friday, right? Fucking, we, we record, we've already recorded episode one just to get us a little bit ahead of Luke and Lewis, just in case anything goes wrong. We have time to fix it up because we want to do it twice a week, right? And then, uh, fucking. <laughs> I, uh, I get home and I, I, pl I start looking at my plan for the week. I'm like, I've done this, I've done that, done that. And then all I got to do on Friday is come in, do the podcast, post some merchandise, loosebeers.com slash merch, 
and then get the fuck out, right? Get a text from Luke. Oh, <laughs> I took the bathroom key home. For fuck's sake, every single cunt who comes here takes the bathroom key home. Everyone. Keelan took it to fucking Canberra. Luke texts me. He's like, what should I do? Gee, I don't know. How about return it? How about bring it back? Hasn't brought it back. Obviously, he's too busy to let me piss. I guess his priority, I guess whatever he was doing was more important than me pissing myself in my warehouse. Again. Because every cunt who comes here is like, oh, while I'm here, I might as well take the toilet key for a week. How about just put it back where you fucking found it? I haven't done that shit for months and almost a year. I haven't taken the fucking bathroom key home. You get it off the spoon that it's on. It even has, it has a little sign called the shitter spoon. Right? You get it off the shitter spoon, you do a shit, you put it back on the shitter spoon. That's how it works. Simple. Easy. Take it off. Put it back. Take it off. Put it back. Take it off. Take it to Canberra. No. Incorrect. Put it back. That's it. That's all you got to do. Apparently, every kind who comes here is like, oh, I'm just going to fucking take it with me wherever I go. And now knowing Luke, I bet he's going to fucking lose it and that'll be it. Then I'll have to go and get all the fucking keys replaced. Because <laughs> that's the thing about this place. If someone loses the key, you have to pay about $10 a key to get everyone's key fucking replaced. Because you can't have a key floating around, which is fair enough. So if he doesn't bring my fucking key back, that cunt owes me a thousand dollars. A thousand dollars for a fucking key. When all you had to do was take it off the spoon and put it back on the fucking spoon. So don't comment under my shit, spearhead Mondays, spearhead Sundays. On any other day, like I encouraged you to last week, I said, hey, if that ever happens again, if I'm ever late with another episode, comment spearhead Sundays all over my shit, okay? Because I deserve it. Well, guys, I spoke too soon because I don't deserve it. I'm the fucking victim here. Comment spearhead some days on Luke's Instagram. Fuck him. Because he's the reason, all right? I know you want to comment spearhead some days somewhere, so go and put it on his shit. Don't put it on mine. Because I'm an innocent bystander who can't piss, all right? And I don't need you to make it worse for me. So yeah, uh, the fuck. That's why the, this episode's here, and uh, I don't know. Fuck, it's cold, man. What is good though is I finally got the air conditioner installed. That being said, I mean, like what, fifty meters squared? It's gonna be at least five meter tall roof. Tin. Wind comes in under the tin, and I got one aircon like you would have in your fucking house to heat the whole joint. And you know what? Does a pretty good job. <laughs> I was surprised, but it does an alright job. Man, I read the fucking... Oh, I've got to talk about this shit. So, um, my tour goes on general sale on Wednesday, right? General sale on Wednesday. It's been it's pre-sale at the moment. So if you are on the gig list, loosespears.com slash gig list, you would have been emailed a link and a password to access the site. Now... Uh, this is fucking incredible. I sold, I'm not going to say how many, I sold fucking heaps day one. So I've only heard the ticket report for the first day and it's been almost a week, been more than a week since then. And holy fuck, if it's gone up even another 50%, that's like almost half the two are gone. Uh, some of the shows are close to filling out, so being sold out in pre-sale. So I'm talking Brisbane, all right? When I picked the venue, I was like, I don't know if I can fill this. I'm fucking filling it. I might fill it in pre-sale. Melbourne, same deal, all right? I've almost sold out a show in Melbourne already 
in day one of the pre-sale. Sydney is half full, and that's a smaller venue because we couldn't find the size that I needed. Uh, and what else was... Let me have my, my fucking... I got... I wrote it down so I didn't forget because I wanted to tell you guys. What I'm saying is if you got the email and you're like, oh, I'll just wait, don't fucking wait, okay? Because pre-sale opens on Wednesday. I have a trailer to drop. I'm starting uh, Facebook ads. I'm doing YouTube ads. I'm doing ads everywhere. The marketing is really going to kick off on Wednesday. So if you signed up to the gig list because you wanted tickets, do it before Wednesday because you may miss out soon after that. Okay, so... Melbourne, holy fuck, I sold so many tickets. Brisbane is insane. Sydney, also crazy. Gimpy, I sold one ticket. <laughs> Gimpy, I sold one. So, if you're from Gimpy, I need your help. Shout out to that one no-mate soldier who, got, who bought the one ticket. And he's, and hey, bro, I'm not saying this is definitely going to happen, but right now, you're in a theater by yourself. So... Bring someone, at least bring a mannequin. <laughs> if, you're, if you're coming to Gimpy, bring a mannequin. Because at least, because when the lights are up, I can't see, I can only see silhouettes, right? I can't see if they're real humans. So I would at least love to perform to an immobile silhouette than an empty fucking chair and one guy surrounded by 99 other chairs. So if you're from Gimpy... Either bring your friends or just go by yourself and bring a mannequin. Either one works for me. <laughs> I'm sure it'll be fine. I've got fucking four, four months to fill it. But it's just funny seeing that one ticket sale. The one no-mate soldier. They're always there and I fucking respect them. Bro, seeing comedy by yourself is the way to see it, I reckon. I think that's the best way. Because you can totally absorb it. You don't have to worry about... Your friend fucking nudging you going, oh, you do that. That's you. Or your, your friend having too many drinks and yelling shit out. See it by yourself. Do that. But not with my show. If you come into my show, see it with seven people. That's the best way. That's the best way. Especially if you're in, actually the best way to see a show of mine in Gimpy is to see it with three mannequins. That's, that's what I want to see. I want to see fucking mannequins lined up for the Gimpy show. Dude, knowing Gimpy, some cunt is actually going to rock up with a mannequin. And you know what? funny as fuck and he's gonna be like hey bro remember remember four months ago when you talked about me bringing a mannequin to the show well i actually did it and then i'm gonna go cool man yeah i i vaguely remember four months ago when i joked about bringing a mannequin but here's the thing i was joking and you actually did it and now my tour manager has to find out where to put your fucking mannequin because of a four month old podcast joke that I will that's the thing you guys don't understand every time I say something on this podcast as soon as it comes out of my mouth it leaves my brain and I never think of it again because I'm moving forward with my life I'm moving forward I'm, I'm, I'm getting over obstacles I'm looking to the future I'm not thinking of the past what I'm really trying to say is I'm trying to make this sound like I'm a fucking inspirational person, but really I'm an idiot. And as soon as I say something, I don't think about it when I'm saying it, and I don't, and I don't think about it. I don't, I don't think about shit while I say it, and then when it's out, I think about it even less than not thinking about it. So it's just gone. Mannequin joke. I guarantee you, two weeks, I'll, I've forgotten that I ever said that. And someone will bring a mannequin to the fucking Gimpy show, and they'll be like, "Huh?" And I'll be like. Why did you bring a fucking mannequin, bro? And he'll be like, eh? And I'll be like, where the fuck am I going to put this mannequin in my show, dude? And he's going to be like, you sold one ticket. <laughs> um, but yeah, what I'm saying is uh, Brisbane, Melbourne, Sydney, especially, but also like, man, even Newcastle, dude, like all of the shows except for Gimpy and Bunbury. Bunbury, I sold two tickets. But, you know, regional towns, they always book later. What I'm saying is, if you're on the fucking gig list and you got the email, okay? I know you got the email and I know it's a fucking hassle. I got to do it, but do it. Because I don't want the people who signed up to the gig list because they're organized and they like my shit the most. I don't want you guys to miss out 
uh, because those fucking general, those lazy general on sale, general public peasants got a ticket that should have been yours. So fucking get on it, lewspears.com slash gigs. Well, it's too late now. If you don't have the email, you don't have it. Um, but I would really, really, really recommend getting on it if you got the email because just search Lewis Spears, you'll get a fucking email. And I might send out reminders to the major cities too, just... Oh, fucking hell, you scared the shit out of me. Hey, man. Come in. How you going? Oh, what's Camera Keelan's here. Did you, what's that? Did you, did you bring the bathroom key? I don't have it. No, you don't have it, because fucking everyone takes it home! <laughs> no, you don't have it. Luke has it. Um... I'm telling all these cunts how well I did in the pre-sale. Yeah, so get tickets. Just, um, hang on. i got to tell Keelan what he has to do today. One second. Buy your fucking tickets. All right, I'm back. And uh, another great thing about this place we just found out that someone smashed one of the windows, <laughs> which is amazing. That's really great. I love being here. It's the best. It's the best place in the world. I have uh, a fucking uh, toilet key that keeps taking interstate flights. I got cunts throwing shit at my windows and uh, can't get insurance. <laughs> this place f fucking is the best. My air condition is too small for the space. I have frostbite. Um, but what was I saying? Oh, yeah, I was saying if, uh, if you've got the pre-sale email, fucking book your tickets because uh, some of the shows are looking like they're, they're close to sold out in the pre-sale. And that was... Well, I'm, I'm talking off ticket reports I had from day one and... Uh, I imagine that those numbers have gone up a lot more, except for Gimpy. I really feel like I'm only I've only sold one ticket to Gimpy, and that's not going to change until a week before the fucking show. Um, but yeah, man, uh, grab your tickets if you haven't, especially if you're from Brisbane, Melbourne, Sydney, or Adelaide. I don't know about Perth because I don't have access to those ones, but I don't know. I assume the major cities are all very similar. Get your fucking tickets. I'm going to stop yelling about it because, uh, it, yeah, we're going to start advertising it pretty heavily because if you think about it, I actually haven't talked about it in any YouTube videos at all. So these are just my people that are on Instagram, Facebook, and the mailing list that know about this shit. I haven't even told my YouTube audience, which is like triple the size that it was last year. So fucking get on it or miss out and don't come running to me if you do because I fucking told you. Um, man, how about that How about that Area 51 stuff? You guys going? I'm going. I love that we live in a world where a Facebook event can just start this kind of shit memory because... I feel like all shit memes like this of like, oh, right, let's meet up at Area 51. Australians started that shit for sure. I don't know this for a fact, but I'm saying that it's 100% true. I bet Australians are behind that event. And if not, we're the main people egging everybody else on because that's really what our culture is, is encouraging other naive people to do dumb shit so that we can laugh. That's Australian culture, man. We're going, hey... All you American cunts, go to Area 51. Get yourself shot in the brain for our amusement. That's what we want to watch tonight on TV. <laughs> a bunch of fucking idiots who took a Facebook event too seriously and ran at a, at a secret government facility full of aliens and just got lead brain. <laughs> That's what I want to watch on Channel 10. The project sucks. I want to see Americans get shot at Area 51. It is funny, though, that, like, a, a Facebook event, it's got, like, half a million people in it of, every, of everyone saying that they're going to Area 51 and everyone's going, oh, you can't stop all of us. Show us the aliens. We're all going to rush Area 51. And if we all did it at once, they couldn't stop us. And you know what's funny about that is that it's fucking true. And we should do it. I think that we should all do it. We should actually go to Area 51, all of us holding hands, singing Kumbaya. You know, they'll take out a couple of us in the front. You know, I'm, I'll be the first to go because my head will be above the crowd. They'll think that I'm some kind of fucking alien that, is, that has roused up the human race to rescue his brethren. They'll be like, oh, get the long one. <laughs> get the one with the weird limbs and the long fingers. Kill that fucking elongated E.T. I'd cop it first for sure, man. But it is true. If we all ran at the fucking Area 51 containment center they couldn't stop all of us and then what would we find 
As I always think about that, I found about this, I saw this uh, article about uh, the government has worked out a gun. It's not really a gun. It's like a like a almost like how they. It's like a gun in the sense that it's like a ray thing, and they can shoot it at your chest, and they can identify people via their heartbeat from like a million miles away, just from their heartbeat. And I'm like, dude, that's the shit they're telling us about. What do they have? What have they figured out? that they're keeping a secret because we, we don't deserve to know. Souls are real. They've got a soul gun. They can identify your soul. They know who's going to heaven. They, they know who has cancer, <laughs> for sure. And they're keeping it in Area 51. And if we all run it at the same time, they can't get all of us. I love, my favorite thing about that Area 51 shit is that you know for sure there's about 100 government employees trolling through all of these Facebook posts all these tweets all these instagrams that are run by 13 year old australian meme lords trying to work out which one of these people is an actual serious threat that's someone's job for the next month is to go through all of these fucking posts and work out if there's if, if any of these half a million people are actually crazy enough to run at area 51 and you know that there are right there's always a crazy cunt Half a million people, one of those people is insane enough to do that shit. Probably more than one. And if half a million people, if you got them all to line up and you shot them with the are you a crazy cunt gun that they keep in Area 51 and they don't tell us about, I bet at least seven of them would come back and you'd have like the fucking serious seven. The serious psychopathic seven that are about to run at Area 51. And free all those fucking aliens just because Australians thought it would be funny to watch on Channel 10 instead of the project. Wait, turn Wiley Dali off. The fucking Area 51 raid's on. <laughs> you know what I bet they have in Area 51? I bet they got a whole vat of Belle Delphine's bathwater. And they're just testing it, doing experiments, putting aliens in it, see how they react. Can we all stop? Can we? Is I think it's time to admit that Belle Delphine is the smartest bitch on Instagram. Can we all agree with that? She's the smartest chick on Instagram, and I'm not saying that means she's like in the world that makes her smart. I'm saying that on Instagram, she's the smartest bitch. Okay, she's she's king of the Instagram thoughts, and that's a fucking title. She is Instagram Thotiana, and I, <laughs> I think it's time to crown her. Because she's fucking done it. She understands memes and she's just exploited that shit. She has... F I didn't know. I knew she was big, but I didn't know she had 4 million fucking followers on Instagram. And all she does is make a, a face like she's been hit in the back with a taser attached to a shovel. That's the expression she makes. If you ran up to someone, if you duct tape a taser to a shovel and then hit a woman in the back of the head with it, that's the expression that made her famous. I don't know if that's how she does it in all of her photo shoots. I imagine not because <laughs> she'd have a lot of bruises. She may have a heart condition by now if she keeps doing it. But that's what it looks like. Like someone's hit a tape, duct taped a taser to a shovel and then hit her as a surprise. Because if you planned it, you wouldn't get the right expression. That's what she looks like every, every time she sticks her, tongues out and sticks her tongue out and crosses her fucking eyes. She's a genius, man. I reckon she's one of the smartest chicks on Instagram. Like, the shit that she's doing is so... I think she's funny. She gets so much hate of all these people hating her, but she's fucking funny, dude. She made a Pornhub account as a troll and uploaded eight videos that were probably monetized because you make money on Pornhub now. And, and you know what? I bet it's better ad rates than YouTube because they don't demonetize, you know? They wouldn't worry about me swearing because they're like, yeah, I mean, the next video that automatically plays is a double anal fisting. So go for your life, man. You can say cunt if you want. This is Pornhub. <laughs> you, should, you, should, you should see how heinous you have to get for us to delete a video of Pornhub. you got to get illegal. <laughs> if you know what I mean. So I reckon she would have made shitloads of money out of that Pornhub troll that she did. And fucking good on her. That was funny as. I knew she wasn't going to do it. 
Did any? It's so funny how fucking. You know what? It's that shit that I was saying with Area 51. If you have half a million people saying they're attending the Area 51 raid, seven of those cunts are dumb enough to actually do it. Not even dumb enough, just crazy enough to run at the fucking soldiers with guns to be like, hey, show us dem aliens, lol. Memes are real. And then they just get lead brain. Shot in the face. You know that means that out of the four million people that follow that Belle Delphine chick, there were at least, like, at least a hundred guys sitting there. They made they, they planned their whole day around it. They're like, right, she's going to post on Pornhub. At this time, I need to get ready. It's like when the w- new World of Warcraft expansion came out when I was, like, 18, and I was like, bro... The new World of Warcraft expansion comes out. I've got to get ready. And I went down to my supermarket and I stocked up. I got Oreos. I got energy drink. I got water. I got chips. I got cookies. What else did I get? And I got a banana so I didn't die of dysentery. And I was like, I'm going to fucking play this shit for three days. And that's the same shit these dudes did. They're like Belle Delphine's porn videos. They drop it fucking tomorrow. I got to get ready. So they went to their local supermarket. They got... Same as me, Monster Energy. (laughs) Different from me, heaps of lube, all right? Because I didn't know you could get that from a supermarket at the time. If I did, I would have been all about that shit. And then they fucking go on Pornhub and she's just eating a picture of PewDiePie like a genius. Knowing that people will just get angry about it and put it on Twitter and then she gets more Instagram followers so she can make that fucking taser shovel face in a unitard. Unitard? Leotard. Is it a unitard? One Piece. Yeah. Set sail for one piece. Hit with a taser and a shovel. From behind. (laughs) But yeah, I think all all this shit, all this hate that that Belle Delphine chick gets, it's so unwarranted because she's a fucking genius, man. And dude, the amount of money she'd be making... Saw so someone estimate that she made like she makes like qu- a quarter of a million dollars a month on Patreon, and she doesn't even post nudes. Porn stars would be so mad. Riley Reed's looking at that shit, going, "Dude, I rode a bicycle naked in the street, fingering myself, and I don't get that much money. This is bullshit. This chick doesn't even show her tits. That's the secret, man. If you really want to make money, you can't show your tits." You always got to be like, oh, maybe next month. And then all those fucking lemons stick around going, oh, I got one half of a millimeter closer to the areola in that Polaroid. Maybe next time. You know what? I bet in real life she's got a boyfriend and she loves to read. <laughs> and everyone thinks she's this fucking anime girl come to life and she's just like, yeah. I don't know. I had braces and all these people thought I was nine years old and that's why people initially followed me because there are some sick fucks out there. But now I just make a quarter of a million dollars a month by posting memes on TikTok and my tits on Patreon. And you know what? I would do that shit. If I could show people like the inch before my dick starts and make fucking quarter of a million dollars a a month i would do that shit for sure i'd be like oh check it out boys check it out gamer boys it's the it's the bit of my stomach right before my dick starts and all these people like bro next month we're gonna get closer to the to the shaft (laughs) i'm sticking around for another month now she's selling her bath water that's fucking genius Because that's such a meme that has been going around for ages of, oh, drink your bath water. And she fucking actually st- capitalized that and sold it. People are angry. Why? That's funny as fuck. And you know what? Hey, I bought some. And I actually got, as soon as I saw this shit on Instagram, because yeah, I follow her. She's hot as fuck. Uh, and she's funny, right? She fucking, as soon as she posted it, I was like, oh, that's going to go viral as fuck. And I bought some. I don't even know what I'm going to do with it. I'm going to do a video. I have no idea what I'm going to do with it. I don't know if I want to drink it. I was thinking of maybe doing a taste test. Seeing if I can tell the difference between hers and mine. 
<laughs> or making someone else do the taste test. Maybe I'll make Luke do it. That'd be funny as fuck. Um, but yeah, I bought that shit. I'm going to make a video out of it. And unlike all these other fucking YouTubers pretending that they bought it, nah, I got the real thing. Dude, I had to sign a fucking disclaimer. I bought it, and when I bought it, I had to agree to this thing of like, I'm not going to drink it. This If I do, I get sick, and she, I can't sue her, blah, blah. And I was like, gee, that's pretty hectic, but I understand because you know for sure every fucking YouTuber and every dude with two brain cells rubbed together is going to drink that shit for a meme because that's the meme. So she's got to cover her back, right? But then... A week after I bought it, I didn't get, like, a shipping confirmation. I'm like, that's weird. Where's my bath water? <laughs> Which is a, a sentence I never thought I would think in my life, but I, I have. And then, uh, and then I get this email, and it's, like, this fucking giant legal notice. This huge legal notice saying that you need to agree that you will not drink it. And if you do, you are risking your life. And you cannot, this whole giant legal notice, and I had to, and you have to reply with, I agree, or you will not receive your bathwater. So I stopped everything I was doing. I was like, fuck, gotta read this. So I think it's on the way. It's coming from England, though, because she's from England, which is, which is weird. I guess that explains the braces. <laughs> um, so yeah, I, I don't know. I'm going to make a video out of it. I don't know what I'm going to do. I will do something, man. Maybe I'll just take it to Area 51 and get lead brain. <laughs> um, but yeah, I guess that's that's the only other thing I want to talk about, guys, is... Uh, what are you going? Fucking... Oh, yeah. Got a bit of time. Um, so yeah, the Luke and Lewis podcast is, uh, is returning. Or the Luke and Lewis show is returning as a podcast. We're so excited about this. We've been working on this for about six months ever since we left radio we had a bit of a month and we were like ah we want to keep doing it we want to do this and this just made sense i think that from the start with radio all we wanted to do me and luke talked about it before we started we were like this is the perfect chance to do really regular content and use the resources that radio have to fold it into our online thing and then that will get a big audience and that'll be great. Uh, and I don't know if you guys know this, but uh, a media platform invented 100 years ago isn't the easiest to integrate into social media because it was invented 100 years ago and everyone there is thinking about radio. I think um, radio was fun. We didn't, okay, so we didn't get fired and we didn't even really quit. It was like this, this, this weird thing of like radio was like, hey guys, we have an opportunity for you in, in Bunbury. Do you want to move to Bunbury for 60 grand a year and do radio five days a week? And me and Luke were like, uh, I would rather die. <laughs> I don't know. We got, it was like with radio for us to move, we wanted to do radio more often and they were giving us that opportunity, but to do it, we had to move to like a regional town and we would have to do it for like three years and then we would maybe move up to a, a better position and we were just kind of like, you know what? We're going to do Luke and Lewis over here and if you would like to, if you have room for us in like a city or if you have a, a show opportunity, we might come back and we'll do that. But if not, that's fine too. And we just left the door open. So it wasn't, we didn't get fired. We didn't quit. Radio was just like, oh, we have these. And we were like, that doesn't work for us. So we're going to do this in the meantime. And whatever happens, happens. So, because yeah, I think I think with, with radio, ultimately, it just got to a point where it was a little bit frustrating that that other people were in control of our progression, I suppose. Like other people were in control of, of like, oh, you're ready for this or you're ready for that or, or now you're moving here. Uh, 
And yeah, I suppose it was just it's just something that we weren't really used to and and what we really wanted to do is just be doing it as often as possible for you guys so that you guys could actually be a fan of it because by by towards the end of it, especially in the last like 8 months of Luke and Lewis, it was difficult to be a fan of the show because you didn't know when we were on, how often we were doing it, what station we were on. We were taking breaks really regularly because we would do four weeks on and then four weeks off and this and that. And it just got to a point where we were like, we, we can't uh, do the show that we want to do because we want to have arcs and we want to return to stuff. And we want we want to be like, oh, so yesterday you talked about this. Well, here's the update. But when you're doing it once a week or 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 taking a break for four weeks, you can't follow up on shit. And I suppose it just got to a point where, where we were like, we're not doing the show that we want to do like we were in the modern digital days where we were on five days a week and the show was really rolling. We were filming every show. We were just like, you know what? I think that we're just going to take a break and when you're ready to give us the resources that we would like or the show that we really want to do, we'll be ready for it. But in the meantime, we're going to do it ourselves for you guys which is a big a big a big fucking jump because we spent i don't know if you guys saw the trailer uh but we spent a lot of fucking money on the set it looks awesome we got really good we have better microphones than the radio do we have a better camera than the radio did uh and we definitely don't have a better set than they did <laughs> because it's just curtains and chairs but uh we're really trying man i think uh i feel really good about uh about this uh show about this podcast and i think it's going to be really big so uh the first episode comes out on tuesday which is tomorrow uh the audio will come out in the morning and then the video will come out at 5 p.m every tuesday and thursday and we've like slotted it in keelan's working an extra two days so he's here five days a week now which is awesome um <clears throat> and uh, yeah, we're, we're really trying to make something of it and I think it's going to be really good. We've already recorded episode one just to give us a bit of leeway time and it's fucking funny. Episode one is awesome. It's really, really good and uh, yeah, I want you guys to see it. So um, check out the Luke and Lewis podcast, whether it's on uh, YouTube, just YouTube Luke and Lewis uh, on iTunes and we're finally on Spotify, which the radio never let us be on, which was another annoying thing. We couldn't be on Spotify because obviously that's radio's biggest competitor so they wouldn't even let us put our podcast on there which is like i don't know maybe half the audio listens at this now so i, I don't know i just think it'll be uh, the, uh, mainly it just comes down to we really just wanted it to be fucking easy to be a fan of luke and lewis we wanted to do it as often as we could and we wanted to do dumb shit and sometimes you want to talk about something for 10 minutes instead of for three minutes and there's no songs, there's no ads. It's just going to be easier. The only downside is we're going from getting paid to paying a fuckload of money to earn nothing on it. So we've got to work out how to monetize it. Are we going to do t-shirts and merch and stuff, um, which, I, which I would love for you to get on board with. But otherwise, you know, there's Patreon. And there's uh, coming to my 2019 tour, which goes on sale on Wednesday. So episode one of Luke and Lewis drops tomorrow, Tuesday. And then my tour goes on general sale on Wednesday. So get your fucking tickets in pre-sale if you have that email. Just search your emails. Search Lewis Spears in your emails. Check your spam. Check your promotions. It's got the link and the, uh, the password. And that, don't miss out. Don't be a dumb cunt or you will regret it like all the other cunts who always fucking, oh, you sold it already. It's like, yes, dude. I've been saying it for fucking weeks. All right, <clears throat> and with that, yelling at people that I don't know, uh, it's time for miscellaneous bit at the end. If you don't know, this is the worst part of the podcast. I do apologize for doing it every week. Uh, it is the part where I answer questions sent in from listeners. If they need life advice, if they just have a funny story to tell me, I would love to hear it. Send it to podcast at loosespeakers.com. And uh, as always, we have uh, a few girls sending in emails, and they always have the most fucked stories. Here we go. My stone sister made me pick up her used tampon while she was a, at a party. Fuck. Uh, hey, Lewis. My name is Holly, and I love your work. Thank you, Holly. You are incredible and so fucking hilarious. I can't wait for your tour. Hey, check out Holly. She's on the ticket game already. Be like Holly. Buy tickets and touch used tampons. That's my fan base. 
Thanks for your hard work you put in your content, your inspiration. Now for the story. Thank you very much, Holly. Um, <clears throat> now, I was around 11 and my sister, maybe 15, was at a party stoned out of her mind. She calls me, Gatorade bong in her hand, demanding I go outside and pick up her used tampon. She didn't have a bin and chucked it out while she was getting ready for the party. What, at the window? Is she around other people? This is so fuck. Girls are weird, bro. She didn't have a bin and chucked it out while she was getting ready for the party, assuring herself that she would remember to pick it up later. So, it was about 10.30pm when this bitch demands I go out into the dark and pick up her bloody tampon. The sudden emergency arises when she remembered that we had chickens and was worried one of them would eat it and die. <laughs> Fair enough. I was thinking, why do you have to do this? But yeah, if you have chickens, they would eat that. Because they eat, they eat mouse, mice and shit like that. They eat mouses and mices. Fucking idiot. After about five minutes of looking, I couldn't find the tampon. And you look over and one of your chickens has a giant neck. And you're like, oh, fuck. <laughs> um, and my phone was... I couldn't find the tampon and my phone was about to die while I was on the call to her. She demands I keep looking as she, was, she is genuinely scared for the chicken's safety. Just... Just as I, as I just as I say I give up, I find her tampon being plucked by one of our chickens. I shoo the chicken away and reluctantly pick up her fucking tampon, thanking the gods that at least she isn't pregnant. As I regurgitate my dinner, snags and mash, of course, well, the chicken can eat that instead of tampons, that's a bit healthier, isn't it? I make my way towards the back door, still on the phone to my sister, demanding I be repaid for my heroic actions. I never was, really, and I'm currently being treated for severe PTSD and something called tri trilocophobia. Trilocophobia. Trilochicophobia. 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 Weird. The fear of periods. Jeez, you're going to hate puberty. <clears throat> the <laughs> Four ish years later, I still bring up that night I see her and demand that she shouts me lunch, but to no prevail. In conclusion, my bitch ass of a sister owes me at least a ch large cheeseburger meal and then I'll be good. Until then, I remain the traumatized victim labeled by society. Hope you enjoyed that shit. Really love your work. Have a shit one, Holly. Hey, Holly, you fucking deserve a burger. Tell your sister that she almost made your fucking chicken choke on a tampon. The least she can do is buy you a burger, all right? Fuck. See, that's a girl that's going to have to use pads for the rest of her life. <laughs> all those giant adult women's nappies. Um... Okay, this is fucking awesome. Got caught fingering a girl during class at my Christian high school. I love my job. Hey, Lewis. Thought I'd just write in to let you know about one of the many fucked up things I've done. <laughs> every every listener. This was a couple of years ago at the beginning of the school year. I feel like Miscellaneous Bit at the End has, has turned... It's like, I don't get advice questions anymore. I just get, bro... I picked up a tampon and then spewed everywhere. Dude, I fucking fingered a chick in my Christian high school. I just get fucked stories now, which I'm not complaining about. But hey, if you need some advice, I would like to break up the monotony of this horrendous behavior of my fan base. <laughs> uh, this is a couple of years ago at the beginning of the school year. I didn't know anyone particularly well in my English class, so I decided to sit next to a girl, which I had talked to a bit, but didn't know very well. We started to talk for a while, and a couple of weeks later, we started messaging over Facebook. We were getting to know each other fairly quickly and started to flirt with each other. Love this. We didn't really have any feelings for each other, so we both decided that a casual relationship would work and that we'd just be in it for the physical experience. Fuck. Dude, the world's crazy, man. High school kids going, oh, we're like, we're just friends with benefits. We're just, we're just on and again, off again. I've got an open relationship. Fucking, everyone's so sexually liberated, huh? Good on him. Uh, we just been a physical experience. Me being a f horny 16-year-old at the time thought that this would be a great idea and that it would never come back to bite me in the ass. 
Well, it, it wouldn't bite you in the ass if you could just keep your fingers out of her puss in science class, you fucking idiot. Like, no one's friends with benefits exclusively in the classroom, you dumb cunt. That's where you, <laughs> that's, that's where you fucked up. Over the next few days, we organized a couple of times to meet up, but they never really came to be. Oh, I guess we'll have to do it in fucking health class. One day, I asked her if she wanted to meet up behind the curtains of the theater at school. Oh my god, just fuck at home. This is what kids don't get. Sometimes, all you, this is what I did. I sat down at the dinner table. Mum, dad, my brother, who was like two years younger than me, so I think I would have been 18. I think he was 15 or 16. No, I was 17. So he was like 15 or 16. Mum, dad, brother, dinner table. And I said, Mum, dad, I want to have sex in my bedroom. <laughs> and my brother looked at me with awe. He was like, I didn't even know that you could just fucking... Like, that's... I reckon that's the most alpha shit I've ever done. Is look at, look at my mum in the eyes and be like, Mum, I'm your son. And I want to fuck chicks in my bedroom. What do you reckon? That's, that's so alpha, bro. That's, there's never been a more alpha male move than looking at your parents and going, Mom, Dad, I want to fuck chicks in your house and there's nothing you can do about it. It's either that or the car park. Make your decision. And she was like, oh, uh, I guess. Yes. Because I was like, I know them. It's either they're going to be like, oh, I don't really want them to do it at home, but I, I guess it's better than the fucking bowling alley or whatever he would do it. I don't know, the fucking... That public toilet's in the park that smells like piss and heroin. I'd rather him do it in his bedroom with fucking comic book posters all over the wall than racist graffiti in a public bathroom covered in piss and heroin. Just checkmated my mum. That's sometimes that's all you got to do, unless you're Indian. If you're Indian, if you're Asian, that's like a, that's a strictly white parents move okay is saying hey mum, dad i'm sexually active and i want to fuck in the house only white people can do that that's real white privilege is because if i know i i had a i had an indian friend and he tr he tried to go on a date with a white girl and his mum hit him in the head with a saucepan from behind and that's a real thing that happened and he laughed at it while he told me. He was like, eh, my mum. And he had, a, he had an Indian accent, which I can't do, but I'm going to attempt it. He's like, eh, my mum. I'm not going to do it. He's like, oh, my mum hit me with a... I, I, I tried to go on a date with a white girl. My mum found out and she came up behind me and hit me on the head with a fry pan. And then I, uh, I, but my world went fuzzy and then I, and I'm looking at him like, dude, that is abuse. And he goes, no, 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 that's just Indian culture. <laughs> Like, no, that is child abuse. He's like, I'm sorry, what's the difference? I'm like, I guess there is no difference. That's white privilege, man. Telling your parents that you want to fuck in the house and le and leaving that conversation with your dick. And the reason why they were really angry was not because he wanted to date a white girl. It's because they were trying to get him to marry his cousin and he didn't want to. And that is a real thing that happened. And that guy's still out there someday, and I, I, I watch his Instagram stories, and I always think, I, w I wonder if you are going to marry that cousin. Because he didn't become a doctor like, or an engineer <laughs> like they wanted him to. So he's got to at least hit that goal of, of fucking having retarded kids to impress his parents. He's like, hey, ta-da, I did what you told me. Now my kid has to wear a helmet. <laughs> You were a doctor, Dad. How did you not see this shit coming? You made me fuck my cousin. Now my kid has, a, has to wear a Barbie helmet just to go to the supermarket. Fuck. Anyway, I got sidetracked. Uh, over the next few days, we organized... They never really came to me. One day, I asked her if she wanted to meet up behind the curtains of the theater at school. She agreed, and we made out for most of lunch. Oh, little Romeo and Juliet. I knew we had English afterwards, and me being the horny cunt I am, I put my hand on her thigh under the table, she opened her legs, and I started to finger her. This continued for a week or so. Ugh, oh, bro. 
Although I vaguely remember almost doing something similar. I don't think I actually... I think I definitely did the thigh thing. I didn't go in for the action, but I definitely... Like, let's just say I came away with dry fingers. But I did something similar. I understand you, my brother. <laughs> uh, this continued for a week or so. Whenever we had English, I would do the same thing and she seemed to enjoy it. One day, I must, have got a I must have gotten carried away when I noticed the guys behind me must have seen me finger blasting the chick beside me. Yeah, dude, that's so obvious. You didn't even do it in the back corner of the classroom, dude. You did it in the middle. Bro, that's fucking so confident. You're like the opposite of a ninja, bro. That is the most fucking obvious shit ever. Uh, I noticed the guys behind me must have seen me finger blasting the chick beside me. Before I knew it, that night, I was in the principal's office lying through my teeth and pleading my innocence. I quickly texted the chick to get our story straight. Fucking, that's such a good move. I wish we had that when I was fucking around. Because we kind of got, we got like smartphones and shit like in the last two years of high school when all that fucking around kind of stopped. But if I had phones in like year nine... If everyone had a phone in year nine, bro, the, the amount of shit I could have organized, I would have been king of the school and they wouldn't even know it. It'd be like Fight Club, but we'd just be like destroying teachers' self-esteem. <laughs> um, I quickly texted the chick to get our story straight. In the end, I got suspended for a day and I had to see the Christian counselor once a week for a term. Now... If you turn to <laughs> if you turn to John 3:16 God says thou shalt not finger your classmates unless you are in the back corner of science If thou musteth fingereth your friends with benefits thou shalt not do it in the middle of the room for anyone who fingers a chick in the middleth of the roometh is a fucking dumb cunteth. <laughs> that says that in the Bible, John 3.16, look it up. I had, to, I had to see a Christian counselor once a week for a term. The kind of a teacher I had English for wouldn't let us sit next to each other for you. Well, yeah, he's not a cunt, dude. He's trying to protect himself. You're underage kids having sex in English class. That's what you're doing. Of What do you think? You goes, oh, yeah. The fucking kids who keep fingering each other? Sure, you can sit together. And in fact, you know what? Why don't you sit in the front row while everyone else is gone and I'll just watch? What do you... Is, do you really think that he's the bad guy in this situation? No. Bro, all it would take is one tweet from you and you could end that cunt's career going, Oh, he made us do it. Oh. I fucking fingered an underage girl in English class and my teacher's a cunt because he won't let us sit together anymore. Dude. Like, do it anywhere else. Do it in a bin. Why are you going to do it in the English class, huh? Shakespeare wouldn't fucking approve, would he? Even Romeo and Juliet did it on a balcony. Imagine if Romeo and Juliet were just fucking in English class. <laughs> Shakespeare wouldn't have written that play. The kind of a teacher I had English for wouldn't let us sit next to each other for the rest of the year. Sorry if it's a bit of a long one, but I hope you enjoy it. Love your stuff and uh, can't wait to see you on tour. Thank you very much, dude. Appreciate it. All right, I'm going to end it there. Uh, don't finger people in English class. If you have to do it, do it in a bin. Or just, do, or just be an alpha male like me and say, Mum, Dad, I want to fuck chicks in the house. What do you reckon? <laughs> do it. What are they going to do? Only if you're white. This is strictly whites only. That's, a, that's the only thing that's like whites only, you know? It's like... <laughs> that's the only thing that's truly whites only is having open discussions about sex with your parents, about being sexually active currently. You know, everything used to be whites only, but now it's just that. And I guess that's probably a good thing. <laughs> and with that, guys, I'm going to end the podcast. Make sure you get tickets if you're on the gig list um, because uh, the general sale is going to go nuts. We filmed a fucking awesome trailer that's coming out on Wednesday. i got a bunch of banging videos coming out this week. Luke and Lewis starts this week on Tuesday. That's tomorrow. Uh, the, in the morning, the audio comes out. And at 5 p.m., the, video, the visuals come out. 
please go and support Luke and Lewis. It's uh, it's a big risk that we're taking, leaving mainstream media, le- leaving radio and that, but I think it's the right one, and I think that we're going to make the show that we always wanted to make, uh, and that is the one where you guys get to watch it all the time and, and, and get it, and it's uncensored and this and that, and uh, yeah, it's going to be fucking great. Check out Luke and Lewis on Tuesday. Buy your fucking tickets if you're on uh, the gig list. Search your emails for Lewis Spears. Support me on Patreon if you can't see a show. And don't fuck people in English class. See you later.